Well, good morning. Am I on? Okay, I'll, I, I can't hear anything, so. Well, if you have your Bibles, I'm going to ask that you turn with me to the Old Testament today, uh, to the book of First Samuel. It's kind of after Judges, Joshua, Judges, and then it's First Samuel. We're going to be looking at First Samuel chapter 3 this morning. I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'm just going to read the first 10 verses for us. First Samuel chapter 3, uh, starting at verse 1. The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. One night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel, and Samuel answered, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. But Eli said, I didn't call, or I did not call. Go back and lie down. So he went and lay down. Again, the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. My son, Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. A third time, the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. And then Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, Go and lie down. And if he calls you, say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Then uh, the Lord came and stood there calling as at the other time, Samuel, Samuel. And then Samuel said, speak, for your servant is listening. Uh, Donald S. Whitney, in his book, Spiritual Disciplines for the Christian Life, has said, discipline without direction is drudgery. He used an example of a six-year-old boy named Kevin sitting one afternoon at guitar lessons. Outside, he could see the other boys laughing and running, playing baseball, having fun. For Kevin, the guitar lessons were a drudgery. Then all of a sudden, an angel came and transported Kevin to Carnegie Hall, where a guitar uh, virtuoso was giving a concert. Kevin was amazed how the musician was able to play the guitar with fluidity and grace. And Kevin got excited and was enthralled by the concert. And then the angel told him, Kevin, that musician is you, years from now. And Kevin said, wow. And the next thing you know, he was back sitting there at his guitar lesson. The other boys were still outside playing baseball, but something had changed. Kevin now had a vision. He now had a direction. He now had a goal. When Walt Disney was... Uh, World in uh, Orlando, Florida opened in 1974. Hey, same year you were born. (laughs) Sorry. Oops. Uh, Mrs. Disney uh, was sitting beside Walter Cronkite. Walt Disney has passed away uh, a few years earlier, and Walter Cronkite wanted to say just the right thing to Mrs. Disney. And so he leaned over to her and said, wouldn't it be great if Walt were here to see this today? Mrs. Disney wisely replied, if Walt had not first seen this, you would not be seeing it today. We continue our series uh, based on the power of one, and we look at the power of one vision. Uh, As a denomination, the Church of the Nazarene has given us the vision 
uh, the what, uh, to make Christ-like disciples in the nations. Mission defines our purpose and gives us the, the why for everything we do. Our overall mission is to make Christ-like disciples in all the nations. Our local mission is to connect people to God and each other. This is why we exist. The, the mission always stays the same. <clears throat> but vision is usually the how. Uh, vision sets the course for where we're going. It, it represents the, the dream of what could be uh, and clarifies the goals to be accomplished. This is how we live out the mission in our generation. The vision will sometimes change. Now, why does it matter if our vision is clear or not? Well, in Proverbs 29.18, we're reminded where there is no vision, the people perish. Without vision, we walk toward an unspecified destination, uh, like the Israelites wandering in the desert. Without the vision, we have effort without effect. Without vision, we lack support and unity. Some work without vision because the reality is we sometimes have to wait for God to reveal His vision to us. Many of us are not patient, myself included. And so we end up falling into the trap of just doing the work even if God's timing has not yet come. As a denomination in North America, our leaders have been praying for a fresh vision from God. John Wesley wrote, God does nothing but by prayer and everything with it. Out of this prayer for God's revelation to us, our leaders, uh, our, our, our leaders propose a new vision for USA Canada. Um, the vision statement for the Church of the Nazarene's USA Canada region is as follows. Mobilizing all Nazarenes in unity. I should have put it up on the screen and I apologize for that. Uh, mobilizing all Nazarenes in unity. Blessing our communities. Bringing people to Jesus. Becoming Christ-like disciples. Let me repeat that again. Mobilizing all Nazarenes in unity. Blessing our communities. Bringing people to Jesus. Becoming Christ-like disciples. So the call then is for us as Canadian Nazarenes to try and live into God's vision for our generation. How do we do that? Um, scripture provides some insights for us, and we, and we can learn here from Samuel's story about the shift from God's mission to God's vision. Samuel's mother, Hannah, had prayed that God would send her a son. And if he did, he would be dedicated to God's work. She couldn't have imagined what, result, what would result from her prayer. She prayed for a child and literally gave him to the Lord. Her act of earnest crying out and her costly obedience were the beginning of a powerful change in that generation and beyond. So what do we learn here this morning from Samuel about vision? Well, firstly, in seeking God's vision, uh, it keeps us listening. In seeking God's vision, it keeps us listening. So Eli told Samuel, go and lie down, and if he calls you, say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. We're told in verse 1 that, that prophets were not being called and that God's revelation was rare during those days. Um, I think part of that comes out of what you would read in chapter 2. Uh, it seems Eli's family was corrupt. Eli's sons were, were stealing 
from the sacrifices uh, made to God, and they were sleeping around with the women who were serving at the tent of meeting. They were making the tabernacle a laughing stock. Uh, and God sends a prophet who declares that they will die for their misdeeds. And Eli doesn't take it seriously enough because he doesn't stop his sons, or too weak to stop, maybe. But God sees something in this elementary school-aged kid uh, and calls out to him. Eli got into trouble because he would not listen. That was why the work of God was hardly seen at this point. But God's mission would continue through this boy. And despite the fact that Samuel had no inkling as to who God was really, God speaks to Samuel that night and tells him uh, what will happen to Eli and his sons. Listen to verses 11 to 14. And the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make the ears of everyone who hears about it tingle. At, the time, at that time, I will carry out against Eli everything I spoke against his family from beginning to end. For I told him that I would judge his family forever because of the sin he knew about. His sons blasphemed God and he failed to restrain them. Therefore, I swore to the house of Eli, the guilt of Eli's house will never be atoned for by sacrifice or offering. Just as God spoke to Samuel, he uses the Holy Spirit and his word to speak to us. It continues to happen. Now, the world, of course, is filled with voices that, that are very good at distracting us. There are things that will take away our focus. But we must continue to pay attention to what God is trying to say to us. Eli also confirms that this is God's voice uh, when, when Samuel shares what, what he heard. And we must be careful to do the same. God will never say something that contradicts His Word. We must always be careful of the, of the voices that speak into our lives. Test it against the Word. Test it against our with our brothers and sisters in the faith. So we need to keep listening. Uh, God's vision also encourages us to keep leading. God will call us to serve in difficult situations sometimes. Look at Samuel's first challenge. Samuel lay down until morning and then opened the doors of the house of the Lord. He was afraid to tell Eli the vision. But Eli called him and said, Samuel, my son. Samuel answered, Here I am. What was it he said to you? Eli asked, Do not hide it from me. May God deal with you, be it ever so severely, if you hide from me anything he told you. So Samuel told him everything, hiding nothing from him. And then Eli said, He is the Lord. Let him do what is good in his eyes. Verses 15 to 18. Samuel's message was a, a confirmation of what had been previously said by another prophet. And in that moment, Samuel went from being a servant who had chores to a leader that God had called. But Samuel had to face his fears and, and speak the truth to Eli. You and I, we will need to face our fears. There are times where you will need to choose a difficult path. You will need to obey what God is calling you or where He is calling you. Uh, someone said there's no growth in the comfort zone and there's no comfort in the growth zone. Uh, Verses 19 to 21, as Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him, and everything Samuel said proved to be reliable. And all Israel, from Dan in the north 
to Beersheba in the south knew that Samuel was confirmed as a prophet of the Lord. The Lord continued to appear at Shiloh and gave messages to Samuel there at the tabernacle. According to this, every message Samuel was given was proven true. This was a confirmation that he was a prophet. This opened the door for God's voice and God, God's voice to be heard, God's word to be spread uh, from when it was rare to now uh, full frequency. Uh, Clark Tanner shares this illustration. He said in Bible college, a fellow student asked our instructor why some Christians seem to have a, such a strong relationship with the Lord and others seem to always struggle. He made the statement that it didn't seem fair to him that some seem to have greater leading because they become so strong and even famous for their walk, like Billy Graham or Mother Teresa. And our professor paused for a moment and then said, all are equally led, not all equally follow. All are equally led, not all equally follow. And I think that was the reason for the difference between Eli and Samuel. Samuel led out of what he heard from God. It was God's voice that empowered Samuel to lead. And his leadership was also confirmed by the people that recognized him as a prophet. God gives us a vision that scares us. We cannot allow fear to stop us from following it. And we cannot allow fear to stop us from leading it if that is where God places us. Thirdly, to follow God's vision, we must keep learning. We must keep learning. It's been said if you stop learning, you stop growing. Uh, 1 Samuel 2.26 says, And the boy Samuel continued to grow, in stature and in favor with the Lord and with the people. Samuel had not arrived. He continued to grow in favor with God and people. It was a lifelong journey of learning and growing. Uh, someone once said, Every man is my superior in that I may learn from him. I believe you can teach an old dog new tricks. Uh, I mean, just look at Abraham and Moses. Uh, Moses was 80 years old when he was called to lead the Israelites out of captivity. I, I was reminded as I was writing this, Ruth Pastersky got a degree at 75 years old. <laughs> now, of course, we can learn a lot from those that are older than us, older than us as well, or more experienced than us. You may learn the right way or a better way. You may learn how not to do something or what happens if you do that something. We can learn something from everyone we meet. How to act or how not to act. What to say or what not to say. Some of you will want to emulate others. And then, of course, there's others you will want to do the opposite from. We can learn from others' mistakes and others' victories. We never truly know it all. And if we think we do, no one can help us grow. Two men were riding a bicycle built for two, and they came to a big, steep hill. It took a great deal of struggle for the men to complete what proved to be a very, very challenging climb. When they got to the top, the man in front turned to the other and said, boy, that, that sure was a hard climb. And the fellow in back replied, yes, and if I hadn't kept the brakes on all the way, we would have certainly rolled backwards. <laughs> now, do you think there was something uh, you could have learned if you were the person in front? Um, it probably would have helped if they were both on the same page about the plan. Shifting from mission to vision must be intentional. 
you'll need to identify the opportunities God is giving you to fulfill his mission for your life. I mean, I think it's worth thinking about USA Canada region's mission and asking ourselves some questions. In, in mobilizing all Nazarenes in unity, am I actively engaging in God's vision for the church, for his church? In, in blessing our communities, how can I be a blessing to my community here in Lethbridge or wherever you might be this morning? Bringing people to Jesus. Who in my life is desperate for the hope of Jesus? In becoming Christ-like disciples, what step out of my comfort zone is God asking me to take? Now these will be things I th that we will hear more about um, from our regional office over the next few years as well. So how do I live into God's vision for my generation? We can learn from Samuel's example. Keep listening, keep leading, keep learning. Our dreams and visions are not limited by our own imaginations. God has a vision for us that is beyond anything that we could think, dream, or do. The Church of the Nazarene wants to see God-sized dreams take hold of the church in North America. For, for that to happen, we are relying on God to actively work in His unlimited power to bring us where He wants us to be for His glory. Remember Ephesians 3, uh, verses 20 to 21. Now all glory to God who is able through His mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to Him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we thank You uh, for Your Word this morning. We thank you for uh, this lesson from Samuel. And in some ways reminded, reminded even about the shape of the world at that point when you called Samuel out. The shape of the world where your voice was rarely heard, where it seemed like nothing was happening because you were being ignored. Or worse, your work was being corrupted. God, I know you are at work. I, I truly believe in, uh, that you are at work, even when we cannot see it. But God, we, we pray that you will help us to keep listening, keep leading, and keep learning. I pray, dear God, that you will call others, just as you called Samuel. I pray that you will call others to yourself that will take roles of leadership, that will take over and take the church in new directions for the betterment of your kingdom. God, I know you are not finished with your church. I know you are not finished with the city of Lethbridge. I know you have so much more you want to see and you want to do in this world. And so God, I, I pray that you would strengthen us, that you would give us the, the, the power, God, to continue to follow, to continue to serve, to, to continue to go into those maybe scary places, God, where we've been fear, where we have feared to go. Lord, continue, I pray to use us as your hands and feet. And Lord, if there are things within us, if there are stumbling blocks, if there are sins that, that we need to confess, Holy Spirit, would you do a work in us? Would you point those areas out and call us up? Call us forward. Call us and help us to seek 
the Lord, to seek His forgiveness and to be empowered uh, for His plans and His purposes. We place ourselves in Your capable hands, God, and we pray that You would use us, that You would lead us where, where You would have us go. We are grateful, God, that You have a vision. And I'm grateful, Lord, for the for the vision that you have shown the leaders of the USA Canada region. And so Lord, help us to to come under their leadership. Help us to see how we can uh, mobilize one another. See how we can bless our community. How we can bring people to Jesus and how we can become Christ-like disciples. We praise you, Father. We praise your holy name today. And we thank you in advance for what you will do. I ask and pray this in the matchless name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen.